And they've been posed with the question of how can we create a kinetic sculpture um, that can be showcased at this big, huge um, school-wide event called Space is the New Place. And so um, the unit started off with the students exploring how wind turbines work, um, basically knowing very little about wind turbines and very little instruction about how they work. Um, so today in class, I'm giving you a challenge. It's the very beginning of our next project. And so um, I've given you a piece of paper. Raise your hand if you'd be willing to read out loud. Teron. Today's challenge, how can you light a light Items in box. Great. Your challenge is to light up a light with the items in your box only. And I'll give you one little hint. This will be your source of wind. Go ahead and get started. When I give the students the project initially, I just gave them a small two-day entry event. And during that entry event, I asked them to use this box of materials. Most of them are familiar with almost all of the things in the um, box. And they're asked to light up an LED with the items in the box. And this project requires a lot of persistence in order to be successful. So because of that, um, I wanted to get them in really quick into doing something hands-on, where they could be really successful really quickly. All right, you guys ready to test? Let's go yeah, ahead and turn yeah. on the fan. Make, make sure those are from Adrian. Hello. Okay. Okay. I then gave them the bigger project. So this was about two days into the unit. Um, the bigger project, I told them they were going to have a real client and they needed to generate interview questions for her. I handed them a project brief, which is something that I normally do. And the project brief gives a very, very succinct description of what's being asked of them. And it starts to lead them in the direction of asking the right questions. We've gone over this. Flip over to the back. Okay, as we go through the design process, first we get an understanding of what the problem is, and then we move on to research. So there are usually two types of research. One of them is getting involved with the client, asking the client questions. The client's going to be coming soon. And the other one is figuring out what products already exist that compete with your proposed product. In the research phase, they typically will interact with a real client. Um, they'll give the client interview questions, or I have also done sneaky clients where the students kind of go and see what this client might need and kind of do underground research so that they can present their client with a product. All right, so I'm really excited about this project, you guys. I have been working with a secret client. She has requested some of your innovation and artistic skills to design something for one of her very favorite events. Um, some of you guys know this client, and so I'm going to be bringing her in tomorrow. So today, uh, we are going to generate some interview questions for her. Um, what's another question? I want to try to do. What color should we make it? Oh, it already is. They are? Yeah. yeah. How many sculptures are we making? Okay. We ask her. What are the size constraints? Good question. So, Space is a New Place is an outdoor, performance based STEAM event and is unique to Drew Charter School. This is the only place that we have been doing Space is a New Place. We're in our third year, and each year we have a different sub-theme, okay? This year's sub-theme is air. Every single year we deal with the environment and how humans interact with the environment and how the environment then gives us information about things that we can do and ways that we can live. All right, so we'll take interview questions now about your project. Okay. Would you like the sculpture painted, and if so, what color? Ooh, paint, and I get to choose colors. Let's see, I'm open to your thoughts about color. Uh, sometimes people have asked what colors represent air, and I think that that is best left up to you all. I would like 
it if something could be um, seen at night. So that might be something that's metallic or has some type of glow to it. After interviewing the client, the students have this like almost like a very comprehensive list of project constraints. So we typically will take notes if there's a real client, we'll take notes by hand. And then we make sure that we capture those notes on like an electronic document that everyone shares. So we're sharing the same list of constraints, right? So some students may have written down these five questions and these five answers. Other students may have written down some other stuff. So then we're going with this like comprehensive list of constraints and it's on the Google Drive, which is something that everyone can look at. And then from the list of constraints, the students start to generate ideas. So their ideas are in the form of sketches because it's a three-dimensional kinetic sculpture. Once they've generated their big dimension sketch, they move forward with presenting that to the client. So it's just going through the design process, it's research, then idea development. Idea development is brainstorming and then narrowing it down for feasibility and constraints. All right, so now that you all have had the opportunity to design your wind turbines and propose a design for our client, we have brought her back in. And today she's gonna give you some feedback on your actual proposed design, and then she's gonna make selections of which designs she likes the most. Hello, my name is Harris. Um, basically my turbine, I basically did a, it's two turbines that spin in opposite directions. Mm. So one goes in front and then one will go in the back. I did, this is my original de um, design that I drew, but then I had fixed it up to make this to my final product. So it's like the base is kind of wavy to like wave. And then I did this color scheme because like green and then I just choose red because I thought it meant with it. So. Okay, cool, nice. It kind of gives me the thought of the earth or land. Uh, I like the use of the color green. Red makes it pop. Green also reminds me of the earth again. After the research phase, but before the idea development phase, the students um, needed a little bit of a review of the elements and principles of art. Um, this is something that we have incorporated into various other projects, but this is actually a sculptural element. And so we wanted to make sure that we discussed the elements and principles of 3D art, which can be a little bit different than just elements and principles of art. And so what they did for this was, instead of just you know writing down some definitions, looking at some pictures, uh, we, I gave them a box of materials and gave them the definitions again and had them create 90 second sculptures. going to share out how their sculpture meets the definition of unity. Okay, um, Rocco and Gary. All right, so here's, here's our design. So our thought process was see how each color is like kind of a shade of red, like you have the red, the orange, and the pink, and they all just kind of fold together to bring out, bring out one another. Okay. After the client narrowed down um, the designs based on what she wanted and how well the student's designs reflected um, her needs, we were able to select four designs. And from there, we divided the students up into groups and they went on to prototyping their actual designs. really have two opportunities to kind of show off or unveil their project. Uh, one of them is a little bit more uh, 
client focus. They get the opportunity to share with the client their design and how it reflects exactly what the client said in the interview. And we just do that, you know, in the classroom. And uh, they just speak directly to the client and then demonstrate the functionality of the wind turbine to her. And then. Um, Big picture, remember this project is for a performance-based event that's an evening event that's here located at Drew that, you know, we have over a thousand people come to typically. And so the wind turbines will be performing at the event and that's their other unveiling. Okay, I was the project manager of this and basically just to sum everything up this is our wind turbine and i know it doesn't look exactly like how i showed it to you in the picture but that was because you know time and um basically execution just didn't work out the way it planned um it's lopsided and looks like this like uneven because we use recycled wood because i remember that you said you want to use this green mm -hmm. reduce reuse recycle so that's why it looks like this recycled wood and everything and look past rocco to explain LEDs and stuff. All right, so basically, I was the electronics team manager, so I was I was responsible for making sure the gear and the generator are connected so that we can transfer the kinetic energy into electrical energy so that we can power the LEDs. And we use parallel circuits in, to connect all of them. Yes. Would you like to see a demonstration? I do. I totally want to see a okay, demonstration. Okay, marvelous. Yeah. And I totally understand the redesign process. Sometimes you have an idea and it just doesn't work, but it looks good. Looks great. Yeah. Good job, and thank you guys for using oh, recycled materials. Up. Yeah. Yeah, so about the actual turbine, um, we use mostly recycled materials. But basically, it works like any other turbine. We have 12 blades on here because we thought this would give it the most speed mm -hmm. in order to light our LEDs efficiently. And we, as a science said, we use that color scheme. Um, we haven't had our generator on attached yet, but once we will, it'll function. Uh, we look to get done pretty soon. And yeah, all the lights will light up a red color, and we do know that it spins, ours even spins without wind. Oh, so, so yeah. So it's fully functional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically. Nice. Would you like to see a demonstration? I would love to see one. a demonstration. Yeah. Yeah, so as it spins, it'll Okay. Hey.